What good is Siri if she's just gonna ignore me? Like, mute my freaking notifications. That's all I want you to do. <laughs> Reach me via email. I do have a. Oh my. Seriously. Stop. Just freaking stop. That like moment of frustration, I don't know why, it just so reminds me of Joe from Rust Development when he yells at Anyang. Uh, yeah, I think that they're gonna know that Anyang is not with somebody. Please tell this insufferable child of God. <laughs> okay. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. <laughs> Sorry, this is like take 15 because I keep getting interrupted by like text messages and Siri and just Anyway, today we are going to be talking about uh, skincare and specifically the skincare routine that I do It's taken me a very long time to settle into a skincare routine that does not irritate or aggravate my skin Like a lot of other spoonies out there. I have incredibly uh, sensitive skin and so it's been a lot of trial and error since I got diagnosed to sort of find a routine that I feel like both like works effectively, but also isn't really irritating my skin. So that's what we're going to talk about today. And I, I have already washed my face, but I thought I would sort of walk you through the steps, most of the steps that I do after I wash my face. There's a couple that I'm not going to do on camera because that would just be, I think, boring and take too long, but whatever. We'll see how it goes. If you've not already done so, I'd appreciate it if you'd take a moment, hit the subscribe button, and ring the bell. I am having a contest for my first 100 subscribers. All you have to do is be subscribed to the channel and leave me a comment in the comment box down below. You only have to do that one time just so I know that you've actually like subscribed to the channel. When we hit 100, I'm going to be giving away a care package of Spoonie Beauty and um, like Spoonie certified skin stuff as well for you guys. Um, while we're doing general housekeeping. My socials are probably popping up down below. I do have an ongoing series that I've been working on with the help of my viewers, uh, which is called Spoonie Stories, where I share stories of chronic illness experiences. I think it's very important that we share these stories and that we talk about them so that non-chronic illness folks can understand a little better what it's like for us. I think this is an important conversation that we should be having. So I'm having it and I would love to hear from you. You can reach me on Twitter. You can send me an email. I do not use anyone's names in any of the stories that I tell. Privacy is guaranteed. So if you're uncomfortable like reaching out through social media, shoot me an email. I promise you I will tell your story on here. I already have quite a few. So it's kind of like a, it's an ongoing process. Um, so it might be a little while, but I am going to get to everybody. All right. Housekeeping out of the way, let's talk about skincare. I have always been obsessed with skincare. I blame my Nona, my Italian grandmother, for this um, because I have very, very fair skin. <laughs> As you can really tell from my videos, I often look a bit ghost like. Um, that's just like my natural. I'm incredibly pale. And I'm so pale, my family literally named me Bianca, which means white in Italian. And from the earliest time that I can remember, my Nona was like slathering me in sunscreen and putting me in hats to protect my skin when I was out in the sun. And she would always lecture me about keeping my skin very, very fair. So my Nona kind of got me started with being obsessed with taking care of my skin. So from a very, very young age, I was like one of those kids that, had like skincare products and um, I saved up right and bought like Chanel. <laughs> I was a boozy ass, boozy, I was a boozy ass little kid. <laughs> um, for as much as, a, much as a tomboy as I was as a child, like I also was like oddly boozy. Um, anyway, but when I got diagnosed, I started having a lot of problems. I developed a lot of sensitivities to perfumes. I developed a lot of sensitivities to chemicals. And as much as like I'd always really been obsessed with skincare, I was kind of guilty of doing the thing that a lot of people do, which I was like, if it's expensive, 
then it must be really good for you. And there are a couple of like more expensive products that I think do actually work. Um, but that's not always true. You can't always just trust that if you're paying more money, you're getting a better product. And I never really investigated what was in the products that I was putting on my face, um, which looking back on it was pretty naive. And then I got diagnosed and I started having a lot of problems. And so I spoke to my dermatologist about it and she was really great about giving me like a laundry list of chemicals to avoid. Um, a lot of them are things like formaldehyde, alcohol, um, you know, there's a couple others, but, and, and even coconut sometimes. Now, coconut is great for a lot of things, but one of the problems that people run into with coconut, and I did not know this until my dermatologist told me this, is that there's a pesticide that they use on coconuts, and sometimes that pesticide is processed into the product, depending on how the product is made, and then people have reactions to it. Um, the other one that you need to be very careful of that's used in a lot of stuff is like seaweed or algae, um, because people have a lot of sensitivities to that as well. If you're not allergic, like I am allergic to it, like I get an anaphylactic reaction from it, which evidently is not all that uncommon. Um, if you're not allergic to it, it's actually got, I think, excellent anti-inflammatory properties, right? It reduces swelling. So it can be good for your skin. But that's one that I think you need to be just like a little bit careful with. Um, the other one is chemical exfoliators. For people with very, very sensitive skin, exfoliation in general can be kind of a tricky subject. And you want to be very careful about how much exfoliant, whether it's manual or chemical, you're putting on your face. And a lot of products have exfoliators, like exfoliating chemicals in them, like vitamin C, right? And But they're not labeled as being exfoliating, but they are. So you wind up over exfoliating your skin and drying it out. So my dermatologist was really great about kind of giving me some, some things to look for um, and some guidelines. And after a lot of research online and looking at a lot of different like reviews and products and all of that, I realized that I was really gravitating towards um, Korean and Japanese skincare for a variety of reasons. Um, it seems to me that the products have more skin beneficial ingredients in them and less nasty fillers. This is not like 100% of the time, but most of the time. And um, both like the Koreans and the Japanese, but I think the Koreans like really, they take skincare incredibly seriously. And what they care about is what works. They really don't care as much about brand loyalty. I liked the idea that like, if you're gonna use a product, it should work. And um, the sort of commitment to what they see as like measurable results, right? Um, that it's sort of the reverse of how it is in the US. For the majority of like the Korean skin people that I've like spoken to, the kind of skincare guru people out there, a brand becomes famous not because of its name, but because of what it does, right? Um, so you don't use a brand because of its name, you use a like you use a product because of what it does, right? So a product because, becomes popular because it's productive, which is kind of the opposite of how it is in the U.S. In the U.S., like if I say like La Mer, right? We all know that's like high-end, super bougie, right? But not all of their products actually work well. I have tried some of, like I like some of La Mer's products um, better than others. I don't really think they're worth the price tag, like honestly. Um, I just don't. And so that would be a good example, right? That's in the US, like we see the name, we like the name, so we think it's gonna be good, right? A little different in Korea. All right, so I do the Korean multi-step skincare process. I know there's a lot of information out there about it. Um, I will link some stuff down below for you um, on it. I'm also just gonna say, most of the links, I'm going to link every product that I use, and most of these are not going to go to Amazon. There is a real problem on Amazon, for the most part, with fake products being sold. I am very leery of buying a lot of 
facial care products on Amazon. Um, there are other places you can go. iHerb is a great website. They carry a wide variety of Korean skincare products at very good prices. Not sponsored. I just happen to like them a lot. Soko Glam is another one um, that has a lot of really great products. And one of the things that I like about Soko Glam is that when you look at a product and you look at the product reviews, you can actually choose to look at the reviews by age category. So, you know, it's one thing for a 20 year old to be like, this is great on my skin. It's another for a woman who is like 45, 55, 65, right? Because it's different skincare needs. And so I really like that aspect of their website that if I'm researching a product and I'm kind of on the fence, I will go to their site and look at the reviews if they carry the product just to see what people in my own kind of age bracket are saying. All right, so first step of the Korean skincare routine um, is what's called a double cleanse. So you wash your face twice. And um, the first is you use an oil-based cleanser and that is to remove all your makeup. I do not use makeup remover. I, I don't need it um, anymore because I use an oil-based cleanser. The reason why this is so nice is that when you're rubbing, right, the, the oil-based cleansers, they tend to be very, very thick, whether it's a balm or just a straight up oil. They're very, very thick, they're very, very slick. And so when you're rubbing them on your face, it's a much more gentle motion than putting makeup remover on something or even on like a using a towelette and like wiping, right? If you think about how you have to kind of like really pull and push when you're taking makeup off with a makeup remover product versus the oil-based cleanser, which is literally just like gliding my hands and it starts to dissolve the makeup. I use, and I'm gonna cut a picture of this in, um, it is the Hamish All Clean Balm. And it's, I don't know, it comes with this little like scoopy thingy so that you don't have to, and it's like sealed so you don't have to worry about it like going bad. And it's literally, let's see if I can get the camera, hold on one second. All right, so you can see it's kind of a thick, like balm texture. So I scoop um, about a nickel size worth out and I massage this all over my face. And then I rinse my face off using um, lukewarm water. I try to avoid using water that's too warm because that is hard on the skin and it can be very drying. Um, I do not bother with drying off my face. I go right into step two, which is the foaming cleanser. Um, and I use this foaming cleanser, it's by Huxley. And it is the scent of the Sahara cleansing gel. And it's got prickly pear. Now, I should have said with the Hamish. The Hamish has a very strong smell, but it is not, it's not perfume. It's a natural ingredient that's it's got some eucalyptus in it and naturally derived so you are going to smell eucalyptus when you open this and when I first tested the Hamish I thought there is no way this is going to work on my skin because I don't normally do well with like fake fake fragrance I mean I knew it wasn't fake fragrance but I was still a little leery because I've been burned right by super fragrance products does not bother my skin at all. And I have recommended this to a lot of people, including a very dear friend of mine who has rosacea, does not bother her skin at all either. So that's just, right, okay. Um, Huxley is the same thing. It's got prickly pear in it, which is very kind of sweet smelling. And so this does have a bit of a fragrance to it, but again, it's a naturally like kind of derived fragrance. So it doesn't really bother my skin. If you're worried about that, I would recommend um, as a second choice, Glow Recipes a Blueberry Bounce um, face wash. I have also used that one. It's very nice. Okay, once my face has been washed, um, every couple of days, like twice a week, right? I exfoliate my skin and I try to do this pretty far apart. So I will do this like on Tuesdays and Saturdays, like try to even it out, right? Um, and I use this product from Neogen and I will probably cut another picture of this in. Um, you can't really see what they are. They're these little individual pads and they, 
your hand slips into them and on one side there's like an exfoliating side and then on the other side there's like a cleansing side so you sort of exfoliate it over your face and then you wipe it wipe it down with the cleansing side um do this on <clears throat> skin that's been freshly cleansed but is dry i like this product because it is gentle enough that it's not irritating my skin but it does actually like exfoliate the dead stuff off of my face to make my skin like a little more radiant. You want to be very careful when you're using physical exfoliators not to just like right go crazy on the skin. That was one of the things my dermatologist talked to me about. Um, I think a lot of people have a tendency to over exfoliate their skin. You're actually shredding the protective barrier of your skin. That's going to lead to things like um, skin texture, more acne, like if you have problems with breaking out, um, even like broken capillaries can be a problem from like, like over exfoliation. So you always want to be gentle. If you're worried, if you're one of those people that you're like, I can't go light, right? And what I do is I literally like, I count in my head. Like, so I, I know I tend to get more buildup like on my chin and my nose and my forehead. And so I do, you know, like up to 20 Mississippi on like each, right? Like, and then I'll do, you know, like 10 on my cheeks. I try to be a little more gentle with my, like my cheek area. But if you're one of those people that like always goes hard into exfoliation, then you might want to look into chemical exfoliation. That can be a little trickier for sensitive skin, um, just because we do tend to react. Uh, there is a COSRX product that is really mild and I cannot think of the name of it right now. I will try to cut a picture of it in. I have used it in the past. Um, it's a it's a pretty decent chemical exfoliator. I just feel like I prefer the manual and since I don't worry about like overdoing it, like I don't have a problem with that. So it's, it's just not that big of a deal. So twice a week, I exfoliate my skin. All right, so once the exfoliation is done, um, I'm, you go to what's called the first treatment essence, and I am using this one. It's by Secret Key. What this is, is it's basically fermented uh, rice water, which is really good for your skin. Um, it's very good for anti-aging, and it's what the SK2, which has been popping up like all over YouTube ads, like in the last, I don't know, a couple of months, that's what SK2 is, right? It's basically fermented rice water. And I've tried SK2, and that is a really good example of more expensive does not necessarily equate to better, because I don't think that it is nearly as good as the secret key or as the Misha, honestly. Like, I notice no difference when I use the SK2, and I notice a huge difference when I switched over to using this one. And I've not actually done this part of my routine yet, so I just take... I just take it right into the palm of my hand, a couple of drops, and then I just pat it in. This has like a little bit of a smell to it, but there's no fragrance, right? Like it's, I think it's, I think it's the rice I'm smelling, like the fermented rice water that you're smelling. Now, if you're really hardcore, you can actually like ferment your own rice water. There are all kinds of like, um, recipes out there online for people that like to do that kind of thing. I'm too much of a spoon. I was like, I don't have enough spoons for that. Like, that seems like an awful lot of work. Um, and the secret key, I think this retails for $19. It's not bad. And I use this twice a day, every day in my beauty routine. And I have been on this bottle for nine months. So, I mean, really, it lasts you a very, very long time. That is one of the things that, that I will say about Korean products. They may be expensive, but the amount that you use is so minuscule. Like, same with the Huxley, right? The Huxley, I use literally a pea-sized amount to wash my face. That's it, right? Um, so this face wash will last me, God, over a year. It'll probably go bad before I can finish it. Um, that's one of the things that I've really discovered about Korean products is they... They really work very well and you don't need a lot of them. So it is worth the price tag. And when I say they're more expensive, I'm talking about $20 and over, right? Not 
not like 40, 60, right? Just to be clear. All right, so once I've done my first treatment essence, it's time to move on to toner. Now, toners have gotten kind of a bad rap, I think, in the United States because the majority of the toners that are produced here have a lot of alcohol in them. So they're very, very drying on the skin. Toners from Asia are hydrating. Um, there are exfoliating toners for people that struggle with uh, acne and other skin issues. They normally are very clearly marked as exfoliating toners. Um, it's not like you're going to accidentally buy an exfoliating toner. Right now I am using, it's the Dear Claris uh, Supple Preparation Toner. This is unscented. Uh, they have another version of this that does have a scent in it, which I did not care for. And I decided when they released this one that I would give it a try. Previously I used the Lamisa Toner, which I really, really loved. My one gripe about it is that the Wamisa toner is so rich, you literally only need like two drops, right? So two drops twice a day, it's four drops a day. I could not finish the bottle before it expired. Like I had over half the bottle left and it's too expensive for me to be throwing out half of a bottle of toner. So I decided to try the Claris, um, which is a, a little bit less in price, um, oops, and is very similar. I so I literally just put one drop, two drops, well that was almost like three, but normally it's just two. I've used one by The Body Shop as well. It's a rice toner, really like it. It is scented. The scent did not bother me. It has a lot of, I want to say it right, niacinide, which is basically vitamin B. It's got a ton of vitamin B in it, so it makes your skin really, 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 really soft. Um, this Dear Claris one has a lot of really good stuff in it too. Uh, I like it. I don't think it makes my skin quite as soft as like the Wamisa or the Face Shop one um, does, but I do feel like it really does hydrate my skin. Now you're probably noticing that I am pressing. I'm not rubbing. Um, it's better for the skin and it actually gives the product like more of a chance to absorb in, and then you're also not like creating more fine lines and wrinkles because you know, all you drag around. All right, so toner. Don't be afraid of toners. <laughs> Just be very, very, be afraid of US, to, like like Western toners, I guess I should say, because of all the alcohol that they put in them. Um, but don't be afraid of Japanese and Korean toners. Um, just right, check the reviews, check the labels, but I like, I do like the Claris one. I think it's a good one. All right. After toner, if it's in the evening, a lot of times I will sheet mask. Um, and if you follow me on Instagram, you might have seen on occasion I do post the sheet mask that I'm doing. I brought like a very small handful out. I have a lot of sheet masks and they are incredibly addictive. I, talk, I talked about them actually in my post infusion treatment video. Um, that I liked them because it's kind of forced down time. When you have a sheet mask on, it's very difficult to do much else unless you're yeah, 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 young, which I'm gonna give him a huge shout out here. What's good, it's yeah, 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 Young, and today I'm here to share with you guys Medihill's brand new sheet mask line exclusively launching in the US. He is an Instagrammer, and I believe he also has a, um, a YouTube channel that he'll post if his review videos are too long to put up on Instagram. He'll put them on YouTube. I'll link his information down below. I am a huge Ye Ye Young fan. Like, all he does is review sheet masks. And that man will sheet mask anywhere. He will sheet mask at a zoo. He will sheet mask at a Starbucks. He will sheet mask while he's stuck in traffic. And he does really, I know that's like, it's kind of gimmicky sounding, but he does amazing reviews of sheet masks. And it's hilarious because... My husband actually recognizes his voice when I have one of his Instagram videos on and literally will groan because he's like, oh, you're going to buy more sheet masks because nine times out of 10, like he reviews a sheet mask and I'm like, oh, that sounds fabulous. I'm going to like, and then I go and I buy it. So if you're watching this, you young, like you are a horrible enabler. Thank you. Um, <laughs> So I grabbed just a couple that I think are really, really good for spoony skin and some of my favorites. Um, if you have issues with anything like uh, 
breakouts, right? Especially like hormonal breakouts. There are three things that I would recommend. Number one is a charcoal um, sheet mask. And this one is by the Creme Shop. I will say I have never, ever had a bad sheet mask from the Creme Shop, ever. Like if I was going to blind buy a sheet mask, it would be by the Creme Shop. They make amazing sheet masks. But the charcoal one is really good. Um, it's supposed to reduce the size of your pores, but it, I don't, I'm not like a hundred percent. Like, I feel like that's a difficult thing to measure because maybe, I mean, maybe, I, I don't know, but I do notice a huge difference. Like if I feel like I'm starting to get a breakout and I, I use the charcoal sheet mask, that stops. Another one that's really good for breakouts is by this company called Seven Days. And I am a big fan of them as well. And it's a tea tree. Well, I guess it's by this company called Ariel but it's from their seven days series. And this is a tea tree mask and tea tree oil is really good for um, breakouts as well. So if you're suffering from like oily skin or you're breaking out a lot, those are two really good kind of like preemptive ones that you can do to help keep your skin in check. Another thing that's wonderful, and there's a variety of these, um, I pulled this one out, but I actually really love, Misha makes a honey sheet mask that I think is probably my all time favorite. They're all in the roof. Like I have like 10 of them in the refrigerator because sometimes I like to put on a cold, like when it's this hot out, it's nice to put on a cold sheet mask like at the end of the day. Um, but this one is by a pew and it's a, another one. It's a honey sheet mask. Honey is a really great, it has um, antibacterial properties. So, and it's also very, very healing. If for example, if you're a skin picker, I am not, but I know some people that are. So if you have spots on your skin that like you've picked at, and you want them to heal over faster, honey is a great way to do that. And there are a wide variety of honey sheet masks out there that you can find. Um, I would stick to well-known brands. So like a Pew, um, <clears throat> like I said, Misha's got one. Um, I believe Innisfree has one. And um, I'm trying to think who else. I think the Face Shop might have one as well. So you want to kind of stick to like better known Korean brands um, for that. But yes, a honey sheet mask is really good. Another one that I really, really like is the, no surprise, it's the Wamisa. And this is the hydrogel mask and it's made, it's a natural fermentation mask. Um, it's lifting and it says whitening and moisturizing. Now, let me just say really quick, there is some confusion about the word whitening in Korean products. Um, I don't see it as much in Japanese products, but maybe that's just the products I'm looking at. This is a lost in translation issue. Um, <laughs> people seem to think, and like I had a friend of mine reach out to me um, who is African-American and who was like, does this have like skin bleach in it? And I was like, no, no, no. What they mean when they say whitening is actually like, brightening, luminous, right? This is kind of a lost in translation thing that in Korean culture, what they're talking about is like more radiant, luminous skin. So anytime you see the word like whitening on a Korean product, that is what they mean. They are not trying to lighten your skin tone. They are not trying to like, right? It, there's no bleach in it. There's no, none of that, right? Um, but this is a really great, it's an organic one, and I, I like this a lot. Um, and it's fermented, so which is really good for um, anti-aging. So after I do first treatment toner, then I'll sheet mask, right? Now, a lot of times people will put on their um, serums and then they sheet mask. I actually like to sheet mask and then serum. The rule tends to be you wanna go from the thinnest, most watery product to the thickest product. And a lot of times I find that the um, serums are in fact just a little bit thicker than the stuff that's in the sheet mask, like the essences that are in the sheet mask. So I prefer to do it that way. Another quick trick, when you pull the sheet mask out, a lot of times there's extra um, like essence in the bottom of the sheet mask. Take some like cotton pads, um, stick it down into the pouch, fold it over, close it up, like kind of move it around, shake it. And then when you want them later, like if you want to do like a quick sort of like skin refresh when you don't have any makeup on, you can pull one of those out and just kind of like swipe it over your face and get a little bit extra essence. 
on your face during the day. It's a really great trick. And then that way you're not wasting the essence. You can also take the sheet mask after you've used it on your face. If it's still wet, you can put it on your neck. Um, a lot of times I will put it on, um, when I'm infused, I put it on my hand because I get horrible bruising. And I found that sheet masking actually over the bruise, especially like a honey or a rose water sheet mask, tends to decrease um, the bruising and speed up the healing time for me, which is great. So you can put them on other parts of your body, you can put it on your feet, right? Like, don't just think like, a lot of times there's there's so jam packed full of stuff that when you take it off your face, it's still, after 20 minutes, it's still wet and it feels kind of wasteful to throw it away. So don't, right? Just like, as long as you're sitting there, wrap it around a foot or whatever, right? Like, it doesn't have to go on your face. Put it on your neck, right? Don't be afraid to use it on other parts of your body. And then just like, you'll pat it in. Now I'm not... I wasn't planning on, you know what? Whoops, I'm knocking stuff over. Okay, what do we wanna do? Hold on one second. I literally, I have a pile on my table like you would not believe. I mean, like, I have so many sheet masks right here, just sitting in a pile, three different honey ones. I have so, oh, four, four different honey ones. Uh, I have so many sheet masks that I could, uh, I could probably sheet mask every day for the next six months. Maybe not that long, next four months. Okay, let's do this one. We're gonna do this Frenvita skin filtering mask. This is supposed to be, it says aqua, aqua peeling filtering mask whitening function now this is like a trans a, clearly a translation issue because i'm looking at the pictures on the back and i'm like i think this is a my guess is a moisture rich i probably bought this based off of a review because i i almost never buy them blind okay so here it is it comes all folded up and it's kind of Kind of slick, it's a little slimy, and you have to be careful taking them apart because you don't want to rip them. So you can see just from me sliding this on, oh, how much stuff is in this? And this is like, yeah, the whole bottom half of this is full of essence. So I'm gonna. Put some cotton swabs in it. Okay, I'm gonna go off camera for 20 minutes. I'll be back. All right, so it's been 20 minutes. I took the sheet mask off off camera, which I, maybe I should have taken it off on camera, but like I didn't have anywhere to throw it away, so. And I mostly patted the essence in. It was pretty drippy when I took it off, even after 20 minutes. Um, I went and looked this one up again. I did the aqua filtering mask and it has centella in it um which i did not i did not realize until i went and looked it up which is a really really good for people that have like breakouts so and even though this says like whitening function again like i've talked about um what that really means is brightening so this is good for restoring the skin's barriers, preventing breakouts, and it's supposed to provide you with more of a luminous glow, which I think I'm looking pretty glowy. Yeah. It almost looks like I've got highlighter on. Um, <clears throat> one of the things that you'll notice with some of the sheet masks is when you take them off after you've like patted them in, there's a little bit of like a, like a sticky feeling that's left behind don't panic that's gonna go away um, for those of you that have like some people I know have like textural issues I don't <laughs> don't panic okay so sheet masking is done now um, I, I'm gonna go in with this product I've talked about this before this is the Hada Labo um, hyaluronic acid milky milky essence this is a Japanese product. I'm a huge fan of Hada Labo. I've used several of their products in the past, including their face wash. One of the things that I love, not only is this an amazing non-fragrance, it's easy on the skin, hyaluronic acid, which hyaluronic acid basically like helps to 
prevent wrinkles, um, help your body repair any kind of damage spots. This product is designed to be refillable. So once you've ordered the bottle, when you need to reorder, you just click on and it comes in like a, basically like an aluminum bag um, that you pour back into the bottle. So it's very environmentally friendly, which I love, um, and it's an amazing product. It's very, very gentle on the skin. You really only need about a pea size amount. And I even take this like up around my eyes, like it's so gentle. Sorry. We're having a bit of a pop-up thunderstorm and the dog is like very excited about it. Hugo, it's okay. So I put this on, even though it's like an, it's an essence, this one's a little bit thick, like thicker. So I tend to put it on, um, like I said, after my sheet masks. Now at this point would be serums. Um, since it's daytime, I don't normally put a lot of serums on during the day. Um, I tend to save them more for my nighttime. I do use um, a snail um, essence serum, which is not actually made out of snails. It's made from a chemical that they secrete um, that's collected like off of them, but they aren't like actually killed in the process of collecting the chemical. It's really good for scarring. It's also really good for um, wrinkles. So I do use that one. Um, I also have used Claris's um, Blue Serum on occasion. I think it's okay. I, I've not noticed like a huge difference with it, but I only ever used it for like a month and then I ran out and I feel like you need at least three months on a product for your skin to like fully cycle through um, for you to get the like full results. Um, and then I also will use this um, one by It's Skin. I really like a lot of It's Skin serums. These are all, these are all like dermatology tested for sensitive skin. Um, and this one's another one that's supposed to promote like kind of glowing, um, healthy skin, but they make a variety. It's skin makes a variety of serums for different, different issues. And I've used several of them and had good results with all of them. Um, so this, like I literally basically two drops, maybe three. I've never understood the, like putting the serum on, like dropping it on the face thing. Like, I don't, I don't get it. So this is one because it's like a radiant serum, I will use it during the day. But I have noticed if I use it at night, like when I wake up again, much like doing a radiance sheet mask before bed, when I wake up in the morning, I have a much better skin day. Okay, next up is eye cream. So I use the Wamisa eye cream that I have shown before, uh, before bed, but during the day I use this one, it's by Benton, and it is the fermentation eye cream. Um, this one is a little bit, uh, heavier, I guess is the best way to put it. And I know this sounds counterintuitive, right? You would think like a lot of times you want your heavy creams before bed and your lighter creams during the day. But what I have found is that for whatever reason with the Wamisa, um, when I put on under eye concealer, products are still kind of settling into my fine lines and wrinkles, like ish, even like really good, like even my ColourPop, right? Which is pretty good about not settling in, which if you've not seen that review, I will link it up above. Um, but with the Benton, there must be something in it, I don't know, <laughs> that's like spackling over my fine lines and wrinkles, because if I put this on and then put my concealer on, I notice my concealer doesn't settle as much. Um, so I like the Benton during the day. Well, me said at night, Benton during the day. Um, all right. And then again, right now I'm using the Nature Republic Aqua um, Super Aquamax gel on my face. Um, if I can get it open, there we go. I like this in the summertime. It is a very light product, goes on easy. Uh, and I know some of you are probably thinking like, oh my gosh, that's so much moisturizer, right? But really, this is the idea of the like last moisturizer is to seal everything in. So you think about like whatever is on top is going to, I guess, take, take the most beating, right? And so the last moisturizer 
really is the one that like kind of seals everything in. So I've got all these like skincare things happening um, and then I'm sealing them in. Now you will notice I did not put on anything with any kind of vitamin C in it. I do on occasion use vitamin C, um, but only at night, never during the day. And when I am using vitamin C, always, always, always use sunscreen. That does make your skin a lot more sensitive to the sun. So you need to be very careful about that. I do not ever put on vitamin C and then go outside. Um, and even when I've used it overnight, right, I try to be very, very careful about, I mean, I always put sunscreen on, but like that's incredibly important because you will damage your skin. Um, and I should have pulled my vitamin C product. I really love it. It's the strawberry vitamin C. I can't think of the name. I will put a picture of it in. Um, you can get it at Sephora. I feel like a lot of vitamin C's are very unstable. They're very light sensitive. And um, so they can go bad very quickly. And the strawberry one, I have not had that issue with. Like it's, I don't know if it's the way that they're processing the vitamin C out of the strawberries or what, but it feels less photosensitive, lasts a lot longer. And it also does not irritate my skin. Um, so that, if I had to recommend a vitamin C product, it would definitely be that one. Um, and then last, but certainly not least, is of course sunscreen. And I am using, it's again by Dear Claris, it's their blue sunscreen, which they have stopped making. I do not understand why they stopped making it. This is a phenomenal sunscreen, but I can highly recommend a sunscreen by a company called Make Prem. I will link them and maybe try to stick a picture in. Um, they also make a sunscreen that is high SPF, PA++++, and um, has a similar like kind of brightening evening of the skin tone, but without leaving a white cast. That's often a real problem with sunscreens is you get that kind of like white, white cast. Um, all right. That's it. I know that, I say that like, ah, that's it. I know that seems like a lot because, but I was talking, Ray, and kind of starting and stopping. Um, when I do this in the morning, the whole thing, minus the sheet mask, because I very rarely sheet mask in the morning. I normally do it at night. The whole thing start to finish takes me maybe, maybe seven minutes at the most. Like maybe. Um, and that's if I'm going slow. And again, like I don't exfoliate in the morning and I don't sheet mask in the morning. So at night, if I am going to be exfoliating, if I am going to be doing a sheet mask, yes, that's more, we're looking at more like a half an hour, right? Which seems like a lot. But um, my skin, you know, the nurses in the infusion bay all the time ask me, like, what do I do? Because I do not look like someone with a severe autoimmune disorder that gets poisoned <laughs> regularly. Um, and it's because of all the things that I do to like take care of my skin. And I hope that, you know, I feel like I look fairly young for my age. Um, I still get carded. And when I get carded, a lot of times I get the thing where the waiter or waitress will sort of like, just look at me for a second. Like, my husband and I have this thing often when we go to like his work events, people will ask us how long we've been married. And when we say, you know, that we've been married 17 years, been together almost 20, um, you see them kind of like doing the math because he's very young looking too. Um, he's much younger looking than I am, I think actually, but um, you see them kind of like doing the math, trying to figure out. <laughs> like how old we were when we got married, like, you know, um, because nobody wants to, like, how old are you? Right? People don't want to ask you that. I mean, some people might ask, but um, I am not ashamed to be in my, I'm like to be middle-aged, to be in my forties. Um, I think I look pretty good, especially for someone with a chronic illness in my forties. And I credit a lot of that to taking care of my skin. All right. I hope this was helpful for you guys. If you have any questions at all, you want any kind of recommendations, please do not be afraid to hit me up on Twitter right, or put it in the comment box down below. I literally spent years researching skincare stuff um, to find things that worked for me. And it is still a continuous process for me. Like I am always looking at reviews and talking to people and looking at blogs and researching like new products. So, um, please, please, please do not hesitate to ask me any kind of questions that you have because I really do believe skincare is very, very important. Um, 
and can make you feel a lot better about yourself. And it is one of those things that even on like my worst, like low energy days, just getting up and taking care of my skin psychologically makes me feel so much better. Even if I do nothing other than like get back into bed again, right? Um, because it is an amazing form of self-care. And if you look at this as like kind of an investment in your skin, an investment in feeling good about yourself, for the long run, it is worth that time. You you are worth taking care of, right? You really are. So take care of yourself. I hope you guys are happy, healthy, and well-rested and are remembering that self-care really is the most important form of care. I love you guys, and I will see you in the next one. Bye, everybody.